How often is the epithelium replaced? Epithelial cells are constantly being replaced and regenerated during an individual's lifetime. The epidermis, outer layer of the skin, is renewed every two weeks. While the epithelial lining of the stomach is replaced every two to three days. The lining of the respiratory tract is only replaced every five to six weeks. The liver, a gland consisting of epithelial tissue, easily regenerates after portions are removed surgically. How often is the epithelium replaced? Epithelial cells are constantly being replaced and regenerated during an individual's lifetime. The epidermis, outer layer of the skin, is renewed every two weeks. While the epithelial lining of the stomach is replaced every two to three days. The lining of the respiratory tract is only replaced every five to six weeks. The liver, a gland consisting of epithelial tissue, easily regenerates after portions are removed surgically. Which kinds of epithelial tissues cannot be classified easily as typical epithelia? Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, transitional epithelium, and glandular epithelium cannot be classified as easily as typical epithelium. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, found in the trachea, bronchi and large bronchioles, and parts of the male reproductive tract, is characterized by the fact that all of its Cells are in contact with the basement membrane, but not all of the cells reach the surface. It is called pseudostratified because it gives the false, pseudo, impression that it is a multi-layered stratification. Since the nuclei of the cells appear to be at several different levels. Transitional epithelium lines the urinary tract, including the ureters. Urinary bladder, urethra, and calyxes of the kidneys. The cells vary in shape depending on the amount of fluid the organ contains. For example, when the urinary bladder contains a large quantity of urine, the cells are stretched out and assume a flat, squamous appearance. When the bladder is empty, the cells have a cuboidal or slightly columnar shape. Glandular epithelium cells are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances, such as saliva or digestive juices. These glands are called exocrine glands. Which kinds of epithelial tissues cannot be classified easily as typical epithelia? Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, transitional epithelium, and glandular epithelium cannot be classified as easily as typical epithelium. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, found in the trachea, bronchi and large bronchioles. 
and parts of the male reproductive tract, is characterized by the fact that all of its cells are in contact with the basement membrane, but not all of the cells reach the surface. It is called pseudostratified because it gives the false, pseudo, impression that it is a multilayered stratification. Since the nuclei of the cells appear to be at several different levels. Transitional epithelium lines the urinary tract, including the ureters. Urinary bladder, urethra, and calyxes of the kidneys. The cells vary in shape depending on the amount of fluid the organ contains. For example, when the urinary bladder contains a large quantity of urine. The cells are stretched out and assume a flat, squamous appearance. When the bladder is empty, the cells have a cuboidal or slightly columnar shape. Glandular epithelium cells are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances, such as saliva or digestive juices. These glands are called exocrine glands. What is a gland? Glands are secretory cells or multicellular structures that are derived from epithelium and often stay connected to it. They are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances. Glands are classified as either endocrine or exocrine glands. Endocrine glands do not have ducts, but release their secretions directly into the extracellular fluid. The secretions pass into capillaries and are then transported by the bloodstream to target cells elsewhere in the body. Exocrine glands have ducts that carry the secretions to some body surface. Mucus, saliva, perspiration, earwax, oil, milk, and digestive enzymes are examples of exocrine secretions. What is a gland? Glands are secretory cells or multicellular structures that are derived from epithelium and often stay connected to it. They are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances. Glands are classified as either endocrine or exocrine glands. Endocrine glands do not have ducts, but release their secretions directly into the extracellular fluid. The secretions pass into capillaries and are then transported by the bloodstream to target cells elsewhere in the body. Exocrine glands have ducts that carry the secretions to some body surface. Mucus, saliva, perspiration, earwax, oil, milk, and digestive enzymes are examples of exocrine secretions. How are exocrine glands classified? Exocrine glands may be unicellular or multicellular. Multicellular exocrine glands may be either simple or compound glands. Simple glands are glands with only one unbranched duct. 
while those with more than one branch are compound glands. How are exocrine glands classified? Exocrine glands may be unicellular or multicellular. Multicellular exocrine glands may be either simple or compound glands. Simple glands are glands with only one unbranched duct. While those with more than one branch are compound glands. What is the unique characteristic of connective tissue? The cells of connective tissue are spaced widely apart and are scattered through a non-living extracellular material called a matrix. The matrix, which varies in different types of connective tissue, may be a liquid, jelly, or solid. What is the unique characteristic of connective tissue? The cells of connective tissue are spaced widely apart and are scattered through a non-living extracellular material called a matrix. The matrix, which varies in different types of connective tissue, may be a liquid, jelly, or solid. What are the major types of connective tissue and their function? The major types of connective tissue are, 1, loose connective tissue, 2, adipose tissue, 3, blood, 4, collagen, sometimes called fibrous or dense connective tissue, 5, cartilage, and 6, bone. Loose connective tissue, also called areolar tissue, from the Latin areola. Meaning open place, is a mass of widely scattered cells whose matrix is a loose weave of fibers. Many of the fibers are strong protein fibers called collagen. Loose connective tissue is found beneath the skin and between organs. It is a binding and packing material whose main purpose is to provide support to hold other tissues and organs in place. Adipose tissue consists of adipose cells in loose connective tissue. Each adipose cell stores a large droplet of fat that swells when Fat is stored and shrinks when fat is used to provide energy. Adipose tissue provides padding, absorbs shocks, and insulates the body to slow heat loss. Blood is a loose connective tissue whose matrix is a liquid called plasma. Blood consists of red blood cells, erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes and platelets, thrombocytes, which are tiny pieces of bone marrow cell. Plasma also contains water, salts, sugars, lipids, and amino acids. Blood is approximately 55% plasma and 45% formed elements. Blood transports substances from one part of the body to Another and plays an important role in the immune system. Collagen, 
from the Greek kola, meaning glue, and genos. Meaning descent, is a dense connective tissue, also known as fibrous connective tissue. It has a matrix of densely packed collagen fibers. There are two types of collagen, regular and irregular. The collagen fibers of regular dense connective tissue are lined up in parallel. Tendons, which bind muscle to bone, and ligaments. Which join bones together, are examples of dense regular connective tissue. The strong covering of various organs, such as kidneys and muscle, is dense irregular connective tissue. Cartilage, from the Latin, meaning gristle, is a connective tissue with an abundant number of collagen. Fibers in a rubbery matrix. It is both strong and flexible. Cartilage provides support and cushioning. It is found between the discs of the vertebrae in the spine. Surrounding the ends of joints such as knees, and in the nose and ears. Bone is a rigid connective tissue that has a matrix of collagen fibers embedded in calcium salts. It is the hardest tissue in the body, although it is not brittle. Most of the skeletal system is comprised of bone. Which provides support for muscle attachment and protects the internal organs. What are the major types of connective tissue and their function? The major types of connective tissue are, 1, loose connective tissue, 2, adipose tissue, 3, blood, 4, collagen, sometimes called fibrous or dense connective tissue, 5, cartilage, and 6, bone. Loose connective tissue, also called areolar tissue, from the Latin areola. Meaning open place, is a mass of widely scattered cells whose matrix is a loose weave of fibers. Many of the fibers are strong protein fibers called collagen. Loose connective tissue is found beneath the skin and between organs. It is a binding and packing material whose main purpose is to provide support to hold other tissues and organs in place. Adipose tissue consists of adipose cells in loose connective tissue. Each adipose cell stores a large droplet of fat that swells when Fat is stored and shrinks when fat is used to provide energy. Adipose tissue provides padding, absorbs shocks, and insulates the body to slow heat loss. Blood is a loose connective tissue whose matrix is a liquid called plasma. Blood consists of red blood cells, erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes and platelets, thrombocytes, which are tiny pieces of bone marrow cell. Plasma also contains water, salts, sugars, lipids, and amino acids. Blood is approximately 55% plasma and 45% formed elements. Blood transports substances from one part of the body to Another and plays an important role in the immune system. Collagen, from the Greek kola, meaning glue, and genos. Meaning descent, is a dense connective tissue, also known as fibrous connective tissue. It has a matrix of densely packed collagen fibers. 
there are two types of collagen, regular and irregular. The collagen fibers of regular dense connective tissue are lined up in parallel. Tendons, which bind muscle to bone, and ligaments. Which join bones together, are examples of dense regular connective tissue. The strong covering of various organs, such as kidneys and muscle, is dense irregular connective tissue. Cartilage, from the Latin, meaning gristle, is a connective tissue with an abundant number of collagen. Fibers in a rubbery matrix. It is both strong and flexible. Cartilage provides support and cushioning. It is found between the discs of the vertebrae in the spine. Surrounding the ends of joints such as knees, and in the nose and ears. Bone is a rigid connective tissue that has a matrix of collagen fibers embedded in calcium salts. It is the hardest tissue in the body, although it is not brittle. Most of the skeletal system is comprised of bone, which provides support for muscle attachment and protects the internal organs. Where is adipose tissue found? Adipose tissue is abundant in the body and constitutes 18% of an average person's body weight. Adipose tissue is found under the skin of the groin, sides, buttocks, and breasts. It is found behind the eyeballs, surrounding the kidneys, and in the abdomen and hips. Where is adipose tissue found? Adipose tissue is abundant in the body and constitutes 18% of an average person's body weight. Adipose tissue is found under the skin of the groin, sides, buttocks, and breasts. It is found behind the eyeballs, surrounding the kidneys, and in the abdomen and hips. How does brown fat differ from white fat? White fat, or adipose tissue, stores nutrients. Brown fat, also called brown adipose tissue, consumes its nutrient stores to generate heat to warm the body. It is called brown fat because it has a deep, rich, dark color that is derived from the numerous mitochondria in each individual cell. Brown adipose tissue is found in infants and very young children between the shoulder blades, around the neck, and in the anterior abdominal wall. Older children and adults rely on shivering to warm the body. How does brown fat differ from white fat? White fat, or adipose tissue, stores nutrients. Brown fat, also called brown adipose tissue, consumes its nutrient stores to generate heat to warm the body. It is called brown fat because it has a deep, rich, 
dark color that is derived from the numerous mitochondria in each individual cell. Brown adipose tissue is found in infants and very young children between the shoulder blades. Around the neck, and in the anterior abdominal wall. Older children and adults rely on shivering to warm the body. Do epithelial tissues contain blood vessels? Epithelial tissues are obscular, meaning they do not contain blood vessels. Oxygen and other nutrients diffuse through the permeable basement membranes from capillaries. In the underlying connective tissue, while wastes diffuse into connective tissue capillaries. What are proteins and what is their purpose? Proteins are large, complex molecules composed of smaller structural subunits called amino acids. All proteins contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and sometimes sulfur, phosphorus, and iron. Human life could not exist without proteins. The enzymes that are required for all metabolic reactions are proteins. Proteins also are important to structures like muscles. And they act as both transporters and signal receptors. What are some specialties of physiology? Specialties and subdivisions of physiology include cell physiology, special physiology, systemic physiology, and pathological physiology, often called simply pathology. Cell physiology is the study of the functions of cells, including both chemical processes within cells and chemical interactions between cells. Special physiology is the physiological study of specific organs, such as cardiac physiology, which is the study of heart function. Systemic physiology is comparable to systemic anatomy since it is the study of the functions of different body systems, such as renal physiology and neurophysiology. Pathology, from the Greek pathos, meaning suffering or disease, is the study of the effects of diseases on organs or systems and diseased cells and tissues. How does brown fat differ from white fat? White fat, or adipose tissue, stores nutrients. Brown fat, also called brown adipose tissue, consumes its nutrient stores to generate heat to warm the body. It is called brown fat because it has a deep, rich, dark color that is derived from the numerous mitochondria in each individual cell. Brown adipose tissue is found in infants and very young children between the shoulder blades, around the neck, and in the anterior abdominal wall. Older children and adults rely on shivering to warm the body.
Do all human cells have a nucleus? Most eukaryotic cells have a single organized nucleus. The red blood cell is the only mammalian cell that does not have a nucleus. What was the first professional organization of physiologists? The first organization of physiologists was the Physiological Society founded in 1876 in England. In 1878 the Journal of Physiology began publication as the first journal dedicated to reporting results of research in physiology. The American counterpart, the American Physiological Society was founded in 1887. The American Physiological Society first sponsored publication of the American Journal of Physiology in 1898. What are some of the uses of carbohydrates by the body? Carbohydrates are mainly used as an energy source by the body. Different carbohydrates have different functions. The following chart identifies some common carbohydrates and their uses. Who is considered the founder of experimental medicine and physiology? The French physiologist Claude Bernard, 1813-1878, is credited with originating the experimental approach to medicine and establishing general physiology as a distinct discipline. His classic work, Introduction to the Study of Experimental Medicine, was published in 1865. He was elected to the Academy Frangus in 1869 for this work. Who improved the microscope in a way that greatly impacted anatomy and physiology studies? Anton van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723, was a Dutch microscopist and scientist. Although he did not invent the microscope, he greatly improved the capability of the microscope. His expert skill in grinding lenses achieved a magnification of 270 times which was far greater than any other microscope of the era. He was able to observe bacteria, striations in muscle, blood cells, and spermatozoa. What are the different shapes and functions of the epithelium? Epithelial tissue consists of densely packed cells. It is either simple or stratified, based on the number of cell layers. Simple epithelium has one layer of cells, while stratified epithelium has multiple layers. Epithelial tissue may have squamous dash, cuboidal dash, or columnar shaped cells. Squamous cells are flat, square cells. Cuboidal cells form a box or cube.
columnar cells are stacked, forming a column taller than they are wide. There are two surfaces to epithelial tissue. One side is firmly attached to the underlying structure, while the other forms the lining. The epithelium forms a barrier, allowing the passage of certain substances. While impeding the passage of other substances. What are organelles? Organelles frequently called little organs are found in all eukaryotic cells. They are specialized, membrane-bound, cellular structures that perform a specific function. Eukaryotic cells contain several kinds of organelles, including the nucleus. Mitochondria, chloroplasts, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus. Where are different types of epithelial tissues found in the body? The different types of epithelial tissue are located in different parts of the body according to their specialization. What were Aristotle's contributions to anatomy? Aristotle, 384-322b CE, wrote several works laying the foundations for comparative anatomy, taxonomy, and embryology. He investigated carefully all kinds of animals, including humans. His works on life sciences, on sense and sensible objects, on memory and recollection, on sleep and waking, on dreams, on divination by dreams, on length and shortness of life, on youth and age, and on respiration, are collectively called Parva Naturalia. What discovery of the 17th century helped establish the science of physiology? The English physician William Harvey, 1578 to 1657 published on the movement of the heart and blood in animals in 1628 this important medical treatise proved that blood continuously circulated within the vessels Harvey's discoveries contradicted many beliefs about blood circulation that dated back to the time of Galen Harvey is considered the father of modern physiology for introducing the experimental method of scientific research. What is the unique characteristic of connective tissue? The cells of connective tissue are spaced widely apart and are scattered through a non-living extracellular material called a matrix. The matrix, which varies in different types of connective tissue, may be a liquid, jelly, or solid.
What is cholesterol? Cholesterol belongs to a category of lipids known as steroids. Steroids have a unique chemical structure. They are built from four carbon-laden ring structures that are fused together. The human body uses cholesterol to maintain the strength and flexibility of cell membranes. Cholesterol is also the molecule from which steroid hormones and bile acids are built. Where is adipose tissue found? Adipose tissue is abundant in the body and constitutes 18% of an average person's body weight. Adipose tissue is found under the skin of the groin, sides, buttocks, and breasts. It is found behind the eyeballs, surrounding the kidneys, and in the abdomen and hips. When did the study of anatomy and physiology first become accepted as sciences? Anatomy and physiology were first accepted as sciences during ancient Greek times. Hippocrates, c. 460-377 BCE, who is considered the father of medicine. Established medicine as a science, separating it from religion and philosophy. His application of logic and reason to medicine was the beginning of observational medicine. What are some of the most common enzyme deficiencies? Lactose intolerance, a condition that results from the inability to digest. Lactose the sugar present in milk is one of the most common enzyme deficiencies. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is a more serious enzyme. Deficiency that is linked to the bursting of red blood cells, hemolysis. This deficiency is found in more than 200 million people. Mainly Mediterranean, West African, Middle Eastern, and Southeast Asian populations. What is the basement membrane? The basement membrane is a thin layer composed of tiny fibers and non-living polysaccharide material produced by epithelial cells. It anchors the epithelial tissue to the underlying connective tissue. The basement membrane provides elastic support and acts as a partial barrier for diffusion and filtration. Whose work during the Roman era became the authority on anatomy? Galen, 130-200, a Greek physician, anatomist, and physiologist living during the time of the Roman Empire. Was one of the most influential and authoritative authors on medical subjects. His writings include on anatomical procedures, on the usefulness of the parts of the body.
on the natural faculties, and hundreds of other treatises. Since human dissection was forbidden, Galen made most of his observations on different animals. He correctly described bones and muscles and observed muscles working in contracting pairs. He was also able to describe heart valves and structural differences between arteries and veins. While his work contained many errors, he provided many accurate anatomical details that are still regarded as classics. Galen's writings were the accepted standard text for anatomical studies for 1,400 years. How are exocrine glands classified? Exocrine glands may be unicellular or multicellular. Multicellular exocrine glands may be either simple or compound glands. Simple glands are glands with only one unbranched duct. While those with more than one branch are compound glands. What is a gland? Glands are secretory cells or multicellular structures that are derived from epithelium and often stay connected to it. They are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances. Glands are classified as either endocrine or exocrine glands. Endocrine glands do not have ducts, but release their secretions directly into the extracellular fluid. The secretions pass into capillaries and are then transported by the bloodstream to target cells elsewhere in the body. Exocrine glands have ducts that carry the secretions to some body surface. Mucus, saliva, perspiration, earwax, oil, milk, and digestive enzymes are examples of exocrine secretions. What is an enzyme? An enzyme is a protein that acts as a biological catalyst. It decreases the amount of energy needed, activation energy, to start a metabolic reaction. Different enzymes work in different environments due to changes in temperature and acidity. For example, the amylase that is active in the mouth cannot function in the acidic environment of the stomach. Pepsin, which breaks down proteins in the stomach, cannot function in the mouth. Without enzymes, the stomach would not be able to harvest energy and nutrients from food. How are carbohydrates classified? Carbohydrates are classified in several ways. Monosaccharides, single unit sugars, are grouped by the number of carbon molecules they contain. Triose has three, pentose has five, and hexose has six. Carbohydrates are also classified by their overall length, monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide, or function. 
Examples of functional definitions are storage polysaccharides, glycogen and starch. Which store energy, and structural polysaccharides, cellulose and chitin. What are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are organic compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The general chemical formula for carbohydrates is CH2O. Indicating there is twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. Carbohydrates are the major source of energy for cells and cellular activities. What is the difference between fats and lipids? Fats are one category of lipids. Each fat molecule is comprised of a glycerol, alcohol, molecule and at least one fatty acid, a hydrocarbon chain with an acid group attached. Fats are energy-rich molecules important as a source of reserve food for the body. They are stored in the body in the form of triacylglycerols, also known as triglycerides. Fats also provide the body with insulation, protection, and cushioning. Who is considered the father of physiology? The Greek physician and anatomist Erasistratus, 304 to 250 B. C. is considered the father of physiology. Based on his numerous dissections of human cadavers, he accurately described the brain, including its cavities and membranes, stomach muscles, and the differences between motor and sensory nerves. He understood correctly that the heart served as a pump to circulate blood. Anatomical research ended with Erasistratus until the 13th century. In a large part because of public opinion against the dissection of human cadavers. Which scientific disciplines study the human body? The scientific disciplines of anatomy and physiology study the human body. Anatomy, from the Greek ana and temnion. Meaning to cut up, is the study of the structure of the body parts, including their form and organization. Physiology, from the Latin. Meaning the study of nature, is the study of the function of the various body parts and organs. Anatomy and physiology are usually studied together to achieve a complete understanding of the human body. What are lipids? Lipids are organic compounds composed mainly of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But they also may contain other elements, such as phosphorus and nitrogen. Lipids usually have more than twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms. They are insoluble in water. 
but can be dissolved in certain organic solvents such as ether, alcohol, and chloroform. Lipids include fats, oils, phospholipids, steroids, and prostaglandins. How is the field of anatomy divided into subdivisions? The field of anatomy is generally divided into macroscopic or gross anatomy, not requiring a microscope, and microscopic anatomy. Gross anatomy includes the subdivisions of regional anatomy. Systemic anatomy, developmental anatomy, and clinical anatomy. Regional anatomy studies specific regions of the body, such as the head and neck or lower and upper limbs. Systemic anatomy studies different body systems, such as the digestive system and reproductive system. Developmental anatomy describes the changes that occur from conception through physical maturity. Clinical anatomy includes medical anatomy, anatomical features that change during illness. And radiographic anatomy, anatomical structures seen using various imaging techniques. The two major subdivisions of microscopic anatomy are cytology and histology. Cytology, from the Greek cyto, meaning cell, is the study and analysis of the internal structure of individual cells. Histology, from the Greek histos, meaning web, is the study and examination of tissues. What are the major bioorganic molecules in humans? The major bioorganic molecules are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. These molecules are characteristic of life and have basic roles such as storing and producing energy. Providing structural materials, or storing hereditary information. What are the major types of connective tissue and their function? The major types of connective tissue are. 1. Loose connective tissue, 2. Adipose tissue, 3. Blood, 4. Collagen, sometimes called fibrous or dense connective tissue, 5. Cartilage, and 6. Bone. Loose connective tissue, also called areolar tissue, from the Latin areola, meaning open place is a mass of widely scattered cells whose matrix is a loose weave of fibers. Many of the fibers are strong protein fibers called collagen. Loose connective tissue is found beneath the skin and between organs. It is a binding and packing material whose main purpose is to provide support to hold other tissues and organs in place. Adipose tissue consists of adipose cells in loose connective tissue. Each adipose cell stores a large droplet of fat that swells when fat is stored and shrinks when fat is used to provide energy. Adipose tissue provides padding, absorbs shocks, and insulates the body to slow heat loss. Blood is a loose connective tissue whose matrix is a liquid called plasma. 
Blood consists of red blood cells, erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes, and platelets, thrombocytes, which are tiny pieces of bone marrow cell. Plasma also contains water, salts, sugars, lipids, and amino acids. Blood is approximately 55% plasma and 45% formed elements. Blood transports substances from one part of the body to another and plays an important role in the immune system. Collagen, from the Greek kola, meaning glue, and genos. Meaning descent, is a dense connective tissue, also known as fibrous connective tissue. It has a matrix of densely packed collagen fibers. There are two types of collagen, regular and irregular. The collagen fibers of regular dense connective tissue are lined up in parallel. Tendons, which bind muscle to bone, and ligaments which join bones together, are examples of dense regular connective tissue. The strong covering of various organs, such as kidneys and muscle, is dense irregular connective tissue. Cartilage, from the Latin, meaning gristle, is a connective tissue with an abundant number of collagen. Fibers in a rubbery matrix it is both strong and flexible. Cartilage provides support and cushioning. It is found between the discs of the vertebrae in the spine. Surrounding the ends of joints such as knees, and in the nose and ears. Bone is a rigid connective tissue that has a matrix of collagen fibers embedded in calcium salts. It is the hardest tissue in the body, although it is not brittle. Most of the skeletal system is comprised of bone, which provides support for muscle attachment and protects the internal organs. How often is the epithelium replaced? Epithelial cells are constantly being replaced and regenerated during an individual's lifetime. The epidermis, outer layer of the skin, is renewed every two weeks. While the epithelial lining of the stomach is replaced every two to three days. The lining of the respiratory tract is only replaced every five to six weeks. The liver, a gland consisting of epithelial tissue. Easily regenerates after portions are removed surgically. who became known as the reformer of anatomy during the Renaissance. Andreas Ves Aleus, 1514-1564, became known as the reformer of anatomy during the Renaissance. His masterpiece and most famous work, De Humani Corporis Fabrica. Published in 1543, described various body systems and individual organs. It also included beautiful anatomical illustrations. V.E.S. Aleus challenged many of Galen's teachings, which had become accepted as fact though they were incorrect.
which kinds of epithelial tissues cannot be classified easily as typical epithelia. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, transitional epithelium and glandular epithelium cannot be classified as easily as typical epithelium. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium, found in the trachea, bronchi and large bronchioles. And parts of the male reproductive tract, is characterized by the fact that all of its cells are in contact with the basement membrane, but not all of the cells reach the surface. It is called pseudostratified because it gives the false, pseudo, impression that it is a multi-layered stratification. Since the nuclei of the cells appear to be at several different levels. Transitional epithelium lines the urinary tract, including the ureters. Urinary bladder, urethra, and calyxes of the kidneys. The cells vary in shape depending on the amount of fluid the organ contains. For example, when the urinary bladder contains a large quantity of urine, the cells are stretched out and assume a flat, squamous appearance. When the bladder is empty, the cells have a cuboidal or slightly columnar shape. Glandular epithelium cells are specialized for the synthesis, storage, and secretion of chemical substances, such as saliva or digestive juices. These glands are called exocrine glands. Which types of cancers develop and grow in which types of tissues? Different types of cancers develop and grow in the different types of tissue. Carcinomas, perhaps the most common type of cancer, are cancers of the epithelial tissue. Sarcomas are cancers arising in the muscle and connective tissue. Leukemias are cancers of the blood. Lymphomas are cancers of the reticular connective tissue. Which types of cancers develop and grow in which types of tissues? Different types of cancers develop and grow in the different types of tissue. Carcinomas, perhaps the most common type of cancer, are cancers of the epithelial tissue. Sarcomas are cancers arising in the muscle and connective tissue. Leukemias are cancers of the blood. Lymphomas are cancers of the reticular connective tissue. Is all the cartilage in the body the same? There are three types of cartilage in the human body. 1. Hyaline cartilage, 2. Elastic cartilage, and 3. Fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage, from the Greek hyalos meaning glass, is the most common type of cartilage in the body. It has a translucent, pearly, blue-white appearance resembling glass. Hyaline cartilage provides stiff but flexible support and reduces friction between bony surfaces. 
It is found between the tips of the ribs and the bones of the sternum. At the end of the long bones, at the tip of the nose, and throughout the respiratory passages. Elastic cartilage is similar to hyaline cartilage except it is very flexible and resilient. It is ideal for areas that need repeated bending and stretching. Elastic cartilage forms the external flap of the outer ear and is found in the auditory canal and epiglottis. Fibrocartilage is often found where hyaline cartilage meets a ligament or tendon. It is found in the pads of the knees, between the pubic bones of the pelvis, and between the spinal vertebrae. It prevents bone to bone contact. Is all the cartilage in the body the same? There are three types of cartilage in the human body. One, Hyaline cartilage, 2, elastic cartilage, and 3, fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage, from the Greek hyalos, meaning glass, is the most common type of cartilage in the body. It has a translucent, pearly, blue white appearance resembling glass. Hyaline cartilage provides stiff but flexible support and reduces friction between bony surfaces. It is found between the tips of the ribs and the bones of the sternum. At the end of the long bones, at the tip of the nose, and throughout the respiratory passages. Elastic cartilage is similar to hyaline cartilage except it is very flexible and resilient. It is ideal for areas that need repeated bending and stretching. Elastic cartilage forms the external flap of the outer ear and is found in the auditory canal and epiglottis. Fibrocartilage is often found where hyaline cartilage meets a ligament or tendon. It is found in the pads of the knees, between the pubic bones of the pelvis and between the spinal vertebrae. It prevents bone-to-bone -bone contact. What condition is caused by the accumulation of fluid in loose connective tissue? Edema is the accumulation of fluid in loose connective tissue. It is characterized by swelling of the affected area. What condition is caused by the accumulation of fluid in loose connective tissue? Edema is the accumulation of fluid in loose connective tissue. It is characterized by swelling of the affected area. What are the three types of muscle tissue? There are three types of muscle tissue in the body. 1. Smooth muscle, 2. Skeletal muscle, and 3. Cardiac muscle. Muscle tissue, consisting of bundles of long cells called muscle fibers, is specialized for contraction. It enables body movements, 
as well as the movement of substances within the body. What are the three types of muscle tissue? There are three types of muscle tissue in the body. 1. Smooth muscle, 2. Skeletal muscle, and 3. Cardiac muscle. Muscle tissue, consisting of bundles of long cells called muscle fibers, is specialized for contraction. It enables body movements, as well as the movement of substances within the body. Does exercise increase the number of muscle cells? Adults have a fixed number of skeletal muscle cells, so exercise does not increase their number. Exercise, however, does enlarge the existing skeletal muscle cells. Does exercise increase the number of muscle cells? Adults have a fixed number of skeletal muscle cells, so exercise does not increase their number. Exercise, however, does enlarge the existing skeletal muscle cells. What type of cell is found in nerve tissue? Neurons are specialized cells that produce and conduct impulses, or nerve signals. Neurons consist of a cell body, which contains a nucleus and two types of cytoplasmic extensions, dendrites and axons. Dendrites are thin, highly branched extensions that receive signals. Axons are tubular extensions that transmit nerve impulses away from the cell body, often to another neuron. Nerve tissue also has supporting cells, called neuroglia or glial cells, which nourish the neurons. Insulate the dendrites and axons, and promote quicker transmission of signals. What type of cell is found in nerve tissue? Neurons are specialized cells that produce and conduct impulses, or nerve signals. Neurons consist of a cell body, which contains a nucleus and two types of cytoplasmic extensions, dendrites and axons. Dendrites are thin, highly branched extensions that receive signals. Axons are tubular extensions that transmit nerve impulses away from the cell body, often to another neuron. Nerve tissue also has supporting cells, called neuroglia or glial cells, which nourish the neurons. Insulate the dendrites and axons, and promote quicker transmission of signals. How many different types of neurons are found in nerve tissue? There are three main types of neurons, 1. Sensory neurons, 2. 
motor neurons. And 34-3, interneurons, also called association neurons. Sensory neurons conduct impulses from sensory organs, eyes, ears, and the surface of the skin, into the central nervous system. Motor neurons conduct impulses from the central nervous system to muscles or glands. Interneurons are neither sensory neurons nor motor neurons. They permit elaborate processing of information to generate complex behaviors. Interneurons comprise the majority of neurons in the central nervous system. How many different types of neurons are found in nerve tissue? There are three main types of neurons, 1, sensory neurons, 2, motor neurons. And 34-3, interneurons, also called association neurons. Sensory neurons conduct impulses from sensory organs, eyes, ears, and the surface of the skin, into the central nervous system. Motor neurons conduct impulses from the central nervous system to muscles or glands. Interneurons are neither sensory neurons nor motor neurons. They permit elaborate processing of information to generate complex behaviors. Interneurons comprise the majority of neurons in the central nervous system. What is myelin? Myelin is a white, fatty substance that forms an insulating wrapping around large nerve axons in the peripheral nervous system. Myelin is formed by Schwann cells, a type of supporting cell, that wrap repeatedly around the axon. In the central nervous system, myelin is formed by repeated wrappings. Of processes of oligodendrocytes, a different type of supporting cell. The process of each cell forms part of the myelin sheath. The space between the myelin from individual Schwann cells or oligodendrocyte processes is a bare region of the axon called the node of Ranvier. Nerve conduction is faster in myelinated fibers because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. For this reason, it is called saltatory, jumping, conduction. What is myelin? Myelin is a white, fatty substance that forms an insulating wrapping around large nerve axons in the peripheral nervous system. Myelin is formed by Schwann cells, a type of supporting cell, that wrap repeatedly around the axon. In the central nervous system, myelin is formed by repeated wrappings. Of processes of oligodendrocytes, a different type of supporting cell. The process of each cell forms part of the myelin sheath. The space between the myelin from individual Schwann cells or oligodendrocyte. Processes is a bare region of the axon called the node of Ranvier. 
nerve conduction is faster in myelinated fibers because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. For this reason, it is called saltatory, jumping, conduction. What are the longest cells in the body? Neurons are the longest cells in the body. Some neurons are 39 inches, 99 centimeters, long. What are the longest cells in the body? Neurons are the longest cells in the body. Some neurons are 39 inches, 99 centimeters, long. What is the largest nerve in the human body? The sciatic nerve, running from the spinal cord to the back of each leg, is the largest in the body. It is approximately 0.78 inches, 1.98 centimeters, in diameter, or about as thick as a lead pencil. What is the largest nerve in the human body? The sciatic nerve, running from the spinal cord to the back of each leg, is the largest in the body. It is approximately 0.78 inches, 1.98 centimeters, in diameter, or about as thick as a lead pencil. Which type of tissue accounts for the greatest amount of body weight? Muscle tissue accounts for approximately 50% of body weight. And connective tissue accounts for 45% of total body weight. The remaining 5% is divided between epithelium and glands, 3%, and neural tissue, 2%. Tissues combine to form all the organs and systems of the human body. Which type of tissue accounts for the greatest amount of body weight? Muscle tissue accounts for approximately 50% of body weight. And connective tissue accounts for 45% of total body weight. The remaining 5% is divided between epithelium and glands, 3%, and neural tissue, 2%. Tissues combine to form all the organs and systems of the human body. Is it possible to repair damaged tissue? Tissue responds to injury or other damage with a two-step process. 1. Inflammation, and 2. Regeneration to restore homeostasis. Inflammation, or the inflammatory response, produces swelling. 
redness, warmth, and pain in the area of injury. The injured area is isolated while damaged cells and dangerous microorganisms are destroyed. During the second process, regeneration. The damaged tissues are replaced or repaired to restore normal function. Regeneration begins while the cleanup processes of inflammation are still in process. Is it possible to repair damaged tissue? Tissue responds to injury or other damage with a two-step process. 1. Inflammation, and 2. Regeneration to restore homeostasis. Inflammation, or the inflammatory response, produces swelling. Redness, warmth, and pain in the area of injury. The injured area is isolated while damaged cells and dangerous microorganisms are destroyed. During the second process, regeneration. The damaged tissues are replaced or repaired to restore normal function. Regeneration begins while the cleanup processes of inflammation are still in process. How much DNA is in a typical human cell? If the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, molecules in a single human cell were stretched out and laid end to end they would measure approximately 6.5 feet, 2 meters. The average human body contains 10 to 20 billion miles, 16 to 32 billion kilometers, of DNA distributed among trillions of cells. If the total DNA in all the cells from one human were unraveled, it would stretch to the sun and back more than 500 times.